Welcome to EF Pod English. Brought to you by EF Education First and English Town. Learn anytime, anywhere. Pod English Elementary 17 Vacations. Hi, my name's Jeff, but I just broke my suitcase. While I'm trying to fix my suitcase, your English teacher will take you through today's lesson. In today's lesson, you will learn how to ask and talk about fun vacation plans using phrases like be going to, to get ready, I can't wait. Before we watch a short movie, I'll teach you some vocabulary which may be new to you. To get ready. I'm packing my bags. I'm getting ready for my vacation. I can't wait. This is the same as I'm very excited. Be going to. We use this to talk about the future. I'm going to visit my friend tomorrow. Let's watch the movie. Two friends are talking about their vacation plans. What is Sally going to do? Who is Mark going to visit? Hi Sally, come on in. Hey Mark, how are you doing? Great. I'm just packing my bags and getting ready for my vacation tomorrow. Where are you going? I'm visiting my parents in Vancouver for Christmas. Great. I went to Vancouver last year for Independence Day. Really? How was it? I had a great trip. It's a beautiful city. Yeah, I can't wait to go. How about you? Do you and Dave have any plans for the holidays? No, we're staying here this year. Dave and I are going to buy a big Christmas tree tomorrow and decorate it. That sounds fun. Well, I'll be back next week. Maybe we can do something for New Year's Eve. Sure, we are having a big party to celebrate. Great, I'll be there. Yeah, all my stuff. How was that? How much did you understand? What is Sally going to do? Sally is going to stay at home. Who is Mark going to visit? Mark is going to visit his parents. We use going to when we are talking about the future. Look at these sentences. I am going to visit Jamaica next year. We're going to buy a Christmas tree. Look at each sentence. What comes after going to? That's right, going to is followed by a verb like visit or buy. It is now your turn to practice speaking. I will show you part of the movie. Watch the people, then listen to me. Repeat what I say. I'm just packing my bags and getting ready for my vacation tomorrow. I'm getting ready for my vacation. Repeat that. I'm getting ready for my vacation. Yeah, I can't wait to go. I can't wait. Repeat that. I can't wait. How about you? Do you and Dave have any plans for the holidays? How about you? Do you have any plans for the holiday? Repeat that. How about you? Do you have any plans for the holiday? Well done, Jeff. Problem solved. I'm going to Hong Kong. Today, we've talked about vacation plans. We've practiced using be going to when you are talking about the future. We've also learned a very useful phrase, to get ready. And if you're really excited about something in the future, you can say, I can't wait. Well done. See you again soon. Bye. Welcome to EF Pod English. Brought to you by EF Education First and English Town. Learn anytime, anywhere. Pod English 
Elementary 18. Weather. This is KAA TV, your eyes in the skies. I'm Joshua Tobeman. Looking forward to your weekend here on the coast. It's going to be a glorious sunny day with cool breeze and very nice temperature, as you can see. Can we have some temperature here? Oh, okay. No, I think I think I think we have some technical difficulties. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Why don't you go over to your English lesson and we'll be right back in five minutes. In this lesson, we'll talk about the weather. Look around. What's the weather like? Is it sunny? Is it raining? I'll teach you some more words to talk about the weather. Two friends are talking on the telephone. Jessica lives in Los Angeles and Adam lives in Shanghai. Hello? Hi, Adam. Hey, how are you doing? Are you getting ready for your visit? It's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to showing you around Shanghai. It's so exciting. Great, me too. Actually, that's why I'm calling. What do you think the weather is going to be like next week? This afternoon I'm just going to do some packing. Well, it's going to be cooler than Los Angeles, and it will surely be rainier. In fact, according to the local weather forecast, uh, it's going to be partly cloudy and rainy this week, uh, and then even rainier next week. Really? Is it the rainy season there now? Well, it's not really the rainy season yet. But we had some severe weather last month. We had showers every week, and uh, this month it's going to be even rainier. So I should definitely bring my umbrella. Yes. And you might want to bring a jacket, too. It's a little bit cooler than Los Angeles. It'll be about 15 degrees when you get here, and it might dip down to around 10 degrees at night. 10 degrees? I thought you lived in Shanghai, not in Siberia. Oh. Sorry, I mean 10 degrees Celsius. Let's see, that's about 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh good, that's more like it. That's much cooler than Los Angeles, but not too severe. Anyway, we're going to have a great time. Let's look at some of those words Adam and Jessica used to talk about the weather. Partly cloudy. This means there are some clouds and some blue sky. Do you know the words we use when there are only clouds and no blue sky? Overcast. The sky is overcast today. Severe weather. For example, very strong winds. Or maybe a thunderstorm. Weather forecast. This tells us what the weather will be like tomorrow. We can watch the weather forecast on TV or listen to it on the radio. Adam and Sally also talked about the temperature. You can measure temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit. London is cooler than New York. We add ER to an adjective to compare two things. Can I have some water? Let's practice the grammar Thank in you. the movie. We're working here. Read the sentences. Shanghai is 10 degrees Celsius. Los Angeles is 25 degrees Celsius. Complete the sentence. Shanghai is cooler than Los Angeles. Repeat that. Shanghai is cooler than Los Angeles. Let's look at another example. Let's now look at part of the movie. Watch the people. Then listen to me. Repeat what I say. In fact, according to the local weather forecast, uh, it's going to be partly cloudy and rainy this week. It's going to be partly cloudy and rainy this week. Repeat that. It's going to be partly cloudy and rainy this week. Well, it's not really the rainy season yet, but we had some severe weather last month. We had some severe weather last month. Repeat that. We had some severe weather last month. Well done. You have now practiced talking about the weather. You can say, it's partly cloudy today. It's overcast. 
We've also talked about other useful words like weather forecast. Can you remember how we measure how hot or cold it is? Yes, that's right, Celsius or Fahrenheit. You've also learnt how to compare two things. Shanghai is cooler than Los Angeles. Well, that's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed your lesson. We have some clouds coming in, but nothing severe, nothing serious. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be just, just fine. Just fine. Nice day. Welcome to EF Pod English, brought to you by EF Education First and English Town. Learn anytime, anywhere. Pod English Elementary 19 Pets. Hi, my name is Alan, and this is my flatmate Backstroke. I'm worried about this little guy. He always eats everything I give him. But today he's not eating a thing. That never happens. I think he must be getting a bit ill. In this lesson, you'll learn how to talk about your pets. We'll learn three new adjectives, all beginning with I. That's interesting, independent, and intelligent. We are now going to watch a short movie. Amelia and Nina are talking about pets. What adjectives do they use to talk about the animals? Let's get a cat for our new home. I'd prefer a dog. I like cats, but they're not as friendly as dogs. Cats are more independent than dogs, and they're quieter. Dogs are noisy. They bark a lot. But cats aren't as affectionate as dogs. Well, most dogs are dirtier than cats. Maybe, but cats aren't as intelligent. What? Everyone knows cats are more intelligent than dogs. You want an intelligent pet? Well, how about a turtle? Turtles are smart, and they're smaller than other pets. A turtle? How unusual. Are they clean? Very clean, and quieter than both cats and dogs. Well, a turtle does seem interesting. Did you get those adjectives? How many did you find? Let's look at some of them. Independent. Cats are very independent. This means they are happy to be on their own. Affectionate. Dogs are affectionate. This is the same as saying dogs are friendly. Intelligent. Another word for intelligent is clever. Monkeys are very intelligent. Interesting. Turtles are interesting. Turtles are quite different to other pets. This makes them interesting. I'm not getting any closer. We can also use all these words to describe people. He is interesting. She is very intelligent. Jane is independent. So what do we do if we want to say that two things are equal? Cats are affectionate. So are dogs. Cats are as affectionate as dogs. This means they are both equally friendly. Does Nina think cats are as affectionate as dogs? Yes, you're right. Nina thinks cats are not as affectionate as dogs. When we want to say two things are equal, we use as, followed by an adjective, and as. Here are some more examples, this time about people. John is not as tall as me. He is not as friendly as his brother. It is now your turn to practice speaking. I will show you part of the movie. Watch the people, then listen to me. Repeat what I say. I'd prefer a dog. I like cats, but they're not as friendly as dogs. 
I like cats, but they're not as friendly as dogs. Repeat that. I like cats, but they're not as friendly as dogs. But cats aren't as affectionate as dogs. Cats aren't as affectionate as dogs. Repeat that. Cats aren't as affectionate as dogs. Maybe, but cats aren't as intelligent. Cats aren't as intelligent as dogs. Repeat that. Cats aren't as intelligent as dogs. Great. In today's lesson, we've been talking about pets. We've learned how to make comparisons like cats are as clever as dogs. Cats are not as friendly as dogs. We've also learned some useful adjectives. We can use these to describe pets or people. An interesting person. An affectionate dog. Well, that's all we've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed your lesson. See you again soon. Welcome to EF Pod English. Brought to you by EF Education First and English Town. Learn anytime, anywhere. Pod English Elementary 20. Babysitting Job Interview. I am wondering how many people I am going to be interviewing to find somebody to work with the children who has got the right babysitting experience. How could it be such a challenge? In this lesson, we'll talk about using and pronouncing words with ing in them. Babysitting. Interviewing. To start, let's review the ing sound in English. Ring. Wing. Running. Interviewing. Hi, my name's Philip. Hi, I'm Candy. I'm happy you could come here today to talk about Thank the babysitting you. job. Thank you. Interviewing. To interview someone. This means you talk to them about a job. Can you guess what job Jennifer wants? Hello. Jennifer wants to be a babysitter. A babysitter looks after children when the parents are not there. How much experience do you have babysitting? No experience. No experience? No. None? None. None at all. Another useful oh. word you will hear is reference. A reference will tell people about you. Let's watch the movie now. Susan is interviewing Jennifer for a babysitting job. Hello, I'm Susan. Thank you for coming to talk about the babysitting job. No problem at all. I think it would be great. I love working with children. Good. I'm interviewing just a few people. I'm looking for someone who can start part-time soon. I'm not doing anything right now. I'm on vacation from school. Yes, I remember. Well, my husband and I both work every day. So we need someone who can watch the children after school until we get home. Oh, that's fine. I have time in the afternoons to come over for a few hours. Good to hear. Do you have any experience babysitting? Yes, I have helped many families. Mmm, that's great. Do you have any references? Yes, I have letters from three different households. They are sending them to you. Good, thanks. Well, the children are coming home in a minute, so let's have you meet them and see how it goes. Great. Does Jennifer have references? Yes, Jennifer has three references from three households. Household means the same as family. Yes, I have letters from three different households. They are sending them to you. They are sending them to you. We use to be with the ing form of the verb for something that is happening around now. Let's look at some more examples. Susan is interviewing Jennifer. They are talking about a job. All these actions are happening now. I'm glad you could come here today to talk about the babysitting job. I'm interviewing just a few people, but I would like somebody to start very soon. 
Now it's your turn to practice what we've learnt today. See if you can fill in the gaps with some of the words we learnt today. Here's the first one. That's right, babysitter. Jennifer wants to be a babysitter. Here's another. Did you remember to use the ing form? Susan wants a babysitter. She is interviewing Jennifer. And can you remember a word which would fit in well here? Excellent! If you go to a job interview, you often need to take references. Now see if you can remember how to use to be and the ing form of the verb to make a sentence. Remember this is for something happening around now. Here's the first one. Well done. Jane is waiting outside. Can you do this one? Susan is interviewing Jennifer. And here's just one more. Yes, I am learning English. Are you enjoying it? Um, how about your references? Uh, I'm, I'm, I, have, I have references. You written references uh, about babysitting? Yeah, I, I've done my time. Done your time, Joe? Yes, sir. Well, today we've learnt a lot about using ing in English, like how to pronounce it and how to use it in sentences. We use to be with the ing form of the verb for something that is happening now. We've also learnt some useful words like interviewing, babysitting and reference. That's all we've got time for today. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson and hope to see you again soon. I spent all that time today interviewing three candidates, craziest candidates. I just can't imagine how to work this now with a working schedule and uh, maybe grandma's an option again, I don't know. Welcome to EF Pod English. Brought to you by EF Education First and English Town. Learn anytime, anywhere. In this lesson, we'll find out how to ask and answer questions in the past using did, like this. Did Molly find the keys? No, she didn't. Did you meet your friend yesterday? Yes, I did. You're going to watch a movie about two friends, Molly and Jessica. One of them lost her keys. After the movie, you'll have a quick lesson and a quiz. Good luck! Hi Molly. Yeah, hi Jessica, it's me. Listen, I'm sorry to be late, but I lost my keys. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I hope you find them soon. We were supposed to be at the party at 8 o'clock, right? Yeah, I know. I just can't believe how long it's taking me to find them. Well, did you retrace your steps? What do you mean? You know, did you check all the places you went to since you got home? For example, what did you do first? Let me see. Well, I ate dinner. So, did you check the kitchen and the dining room to see if you put your keys down there? Yeah, I did. I already checked the kitchen and the dining room. Hmm, but you didn't find them there, huh? So what did you do after dinner? I watched a little TV in the living room after dinner, but I've already checked for the keys in the living room. No luck there either? Okay. Where do you generally put your keys? Is there a place that you usually put them? Well, sometimes I put them in top drawer, but I checked there first and the keys weren't there. Hmm, I don't know what to say. I can't suggest any other place to look. Oh, you're not going to believe this. The keys are in the front door. 
You're kidding. Too funny. Anyway, I'm glad you found them. Now we can go to the party. Yeah, sorry I took so long to find them. No problem. See you soon. Well, did Molly find the keys? Yes, she did. Jessica asks several questions about what Molly did during the day. Let's look at making questions in the past. Did Molly find the keys? We use the auxiliary verb did in questions like this. Let's listen to Molly again. Oh, you're not going to believe this. The keys are in the front door. Did Molly find the keys? Yes, she did. She did find the keys. You can use short answers with yes or no questions. Yes, she did. Or no, she didn't. Let's look at some more examples using did for questions. Did you go to the gym? Yes, I did. Did he meet you? No, he didn't. Let's try a short quiz. Where are Molly and Jessica going? Molly and Jessica are going to a party. Did Jessica lose her keys? No, she didn't. Did Molly check the kitchen? Yes, she did. Molly checked the kitchen. Where were the keys? The keys were in the front door. Well done. Today we've talked about asking and answering questions using did. Did Jessica lose her keys? No, she didn't. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. See you next time. Welcome to EF Pod English, brought to you by EF Education First and English Town. Learn anytime, anywhere. Pod English, Elementary 22, complaining. Oh, my name's Philip, and I've had a really, really hard day at work. And all I want to do now is get some sleep. In today's lesson, we're going to look at a new way of talking about the past. We're going to learn about the past continuous. It was raining all day on Monday. I was running at the gym for two hours today. What's that noise? Are they kidding me? The building is 10 o'clock at night. Oh. Oh. Let's watch a movie now. John is talking to his travel agent. Is John happy? Did he have a good vacation? Oh. Hey John, how's your vacation? Actually, it wasn't much of a vacation after all, and I was wondering if I could get a refund or a discount. You're kidding. I'm so sorry to hear that. I know you were looking forward to it. I was. I was hoping this would be the perfect Hawaiian vacation, but that's not how it turned out. That's too bad. So what happened? Well, first of all, Saturday morning, the airport shuttle was 20 minutes late. I thought I was going to miss my flight. But you made it to the airport in time. Well, yeah. I was worrying the whole way there, but I made it in time. Barely. Then how about when you finally got to Hawaii? I'm sure you had a great time then. No. I couldn't believe it. It was raining when I got there, and it kept raining almost the whole week I was there. That's too bad. Yeah, it was disappointing. So that's why I was hoping that I could get some kind of discount, since my vacation was not much fun at all. Well, I'm sorry to hear that you had such tough luck, but I'm afraid it's out of my hands. Really? There's nothing you can do? As I said, I am sorry, but you really didn't have trouble with your accommodation or your transportation, right? No, I didn't. 
Well, then I am sorry. I can't offer a discount. Okay, well, thanks anyway. So, is John happy? No, he's not. He didn't have a good vacation. Why? Here's John again. It was raining when I got there, and it kept raining almost the whole week I was there. It was raining when he got there. We use the past of to be and a verb with ing to talk about an action in the past, the past continuous. But what sort of action? We use this tense for actions that were in progress, during or at a specific time. See if you can do these examples by yourself. Use the words to make a sentence. We'll do the first one together. Yesterday I was playing tennis when it started to rain. Now you say it. Yesterday I was playing tennis when it started to rain. The sun was shining all day. The sun was shining all day. What were you doing yesterday at noon? Hello? Hello? Yeah, I'm not surprised you can't hear me. It's because you're drilling. It's 11 o'clock at night now. Can you please... Don't you talk to me like that. It's 11 o'clock at night. I am well, I, I, I know it's your house, but I live right beneath you. It's like, listen, listen. Well done. You've now learned to say the past of to be and a verb with ing to talk about an action in the past, the past continuous. Yesterday, I was playing tennis. The sun was shining all day. Well, that's all we've got time for today, but I'll see you again soon. Shut up! Be quiet! Ugh. Welcome to EF Pod English. Brought to you by EF Education First and English Town. Learn anytime, anywhere. Pod English, Elementary 23, ill. I believe that I'm sick. I have a headache, a fever, and a runny nose, and I just feel miserable. Achoo! In today's lesson, we're going to look at ways of talking about illness. We can say, what's the matter? Or, what's wrong? We say this if someone is ill. Let's watch the movie now. Emily is talking to her doctor. What's wrong with Emily? Dr. Green, I don't feel well. What's the matter, Emily? I've got a terrible cough. What else is wrong? My stomach hurts, and I can't stop sneezing. It sounds like you have a cold. I also have a headache, and sometimes I feel dizzy. Any other symptoms? Is anything else the matter? I think I have a sore throat, and I'm always tired. You should stay home tomorrow. You should take some aspirin and go to bed. So I shouldn't go to work tomorrow. Is that right? Well, see how you feel tomorrow. If you don't feel better, call the nurse and we'll make another appointment. Thank you, Doctor. I really appreciate it. Wait, you forgot your aspirin. Did you find out what is wrong with Emily? Can you remember another way of saying this? That's right. What's the matter with Emily? <coughs> Emily has a cough. <coughs> Emily has a sore throat. Emily has a headache. Uh... When we are talking about an illness, we say to have a cough, a headache, a sore throat, a cold. K 
Can you remember what Emily says to the doctor at the beginning? Dr Green, I don't feel well. I don't feel well. Now you say it. I don't feel well. We're now going to do an exercise. See if you can fill in the gaps in the conversation. <coughs> fill in the gaps. What does the doctor say? What does Emily say? Dr Green, I don't feel well. What's the matter, Emily? The doctor says, what's the matter? Emily says, I don't feel well. So what is wrong with Emily? Use the words to make an answer. Let's do the first one together. Headache. Emily has a headache. See if you can do the rest yourself. Sore throat. Cough. Cold. Stomach ache. Let's do them together. Emily has a sore throat. Emily has a cough. Emily has a cold. Emily has a stomach ache. Today we've learnt how to talk about illness. To have a cough, a headache, a sore throat, a cold. Well done. See you again soon. I'll do anything if I can just sleep five minutes tonight. One, two, three. Welcome to EF Pod English. Brought to you by EF Education First and English Town. Learn anytime, anywhere. Pod English Elementary 24. Fireworks Party. Hey guys, I'm Joe, your uh, neighborhood, friendly neighborhood uh, fireworks guy. Technician, I should say. After all, I did go to college for this one. Uh, this year we're going to have a good fireworks show. I'm going to start off with a little, uh, a little firefly, as I like to call them. Pretty good little deals. Remember, I'm a pro, so don't do this at home. Uh, hope you're ready. What the, what's going on? That was kind of weak. Today, we're going to talk about comparing two things. This is better than that, or that is worse than this. We're also going to practice with long adjectives like beautiful and colorful. See? Hmm, kind of disappointing. I'm not sure what's going on here, but. Uh... Maybe I just need some bigger and better equipment. In the movie, Lisa and Tracy are going to a fireworks party. They will compare this year's party and last year's party. Do you think the fireworks party will be bigger than last year? Yes, I do, but it's much colder this year than last. Before we leave, can I borrow a pair of gloves? Last year my hands were freezing. Sure, here you are. There will be a fire at the party. Do you want to stand near it? Good idea. It's much larger than the fire they had last year. Last year I was so cold. You know, you'd be better if you had something to put around your neck. Do you want to wear a scarf? Yes, please. What else do you have in that bag? Um, a flask of hot tea. It's nice to have something warm to drink while watching the fireworks. Would you like me to pour you a cup now? Maybe later. What time does it start? In 50 minutes. It's meant to be much better than last time. Why? They were definitely good last year. This year it's meant to be louder and brighter and more colourful. Do you think you'll enjoy it? Yes, I do. But the weather's getting worse. I hope it doesn't get too cold.
Let's look at a sentence from the movie. The fireworks party is meant to be much better than last year. Better than. When we want to compare two things using the adjective good, we say better than. A is better than B, and for bad we say worse. A is worse than B. Here are some examples. My new bicycle is better than my old one. It's so hot. This summer is worse than last year. This food is better than last time. Can you remember what Lisa said about the colours of the fireworks party? This year it's meant to be louder and brighter and more colourful. With loud and bright, we、one. just add er、the、to the adjective.、Betty. Louder than, brighter than. The fireworks will be louder and brighter than last year. But with longer adjectives like colourful, we use more, more colourful than. It will be more colourful than last year. Check. It's live. Okay, one, two, three. Not again. This is supposed to be the biggest and the best. And what happened? Let's practice comparing things. Fill in the gap. Beautiful. Jackie is more beautiful than her sister. Next, use bad. The weather is terrible. It's much worse than last year. Finally, use good. John is better than me at speaking English. Well, there's always the last resort. I just have to jumpstart it a little bit. It might get a little louder. But... So today we've talked about comparing two things. The fireworks will be brighter and more colourful than last year. We hope you've enjoyed the lesson. Counting on you, baby. See you again soon. Okay, let's go. Three, two, one. What is going on today? Welcome to EF Pod English, brought to you by EF Education First and English Town. Learn anytime, anywhere. Pod English Elementary Twenty Five Office Party. In this lesson, we'll find out how to ask questions like these. You're going to the party tonight, aren't you? It's a lovely day today, isn't it? These are called tag questions. But first, let's watch the movie. Diane and Max are talking about the office party. Diane, who works in human resources or HR, is organising the party. You are going to the office party this weekend, aren't you? I'm not sure. I haven't decided yet. Are you? Yes, I'm on the planning committee. You should come. I just talked to Lisa from HR, and we finalized all of the events. It's going to be fun. That's good. The last party was horrible. There was nothing to do. What did you think of it? Yeah, it was a disaster. <laughs> I don't think anybody had a good time. <laughs> But for this party, we have two bands coming. Have you heard of Wicked Soul? Yeah. They're a pretty famous jazz and funk band. They aren't going to be there, are they? Yes, and a salsa band too. You are a good dancer, aren't you? Well, not really, but I try. <laughs> What else is going on? First, the jazz band is going to play. After that, we'll have the buffet, and then there's going to be an award ceremony.、Uh, next, we're going to hand out prizes and even give away a car. You're kidding. No. 
<laughs> Finally, the salsa band is going to play, and then we're going to give away prizes to the best dancers. Wow, this is beginning to sound exciting. It's okay if we bring someone, isn't it? I think so. But I thought you were single. <laughs> Who are you bringing? Well, maybe my friend Jessica. She's a great dancer. You should definitely come. It's going to be a great party. This is a question from the movie. Listen and then repeat after me. You are going to the office party this weekend, aren't you? Your voice should go up at the end of the sentence. Let's look at something else that Max said. It's okay if we bring someone, isn't it? It's okay if we bring someone, isn't it? Have a look at that sentence. Isn't it is a tag question. It comes at the end of the question. How do we make the tag question? We use the opposite of the verb in the main question. It's okay, isn't it? It's is positive, so we use isn't it at the end to check if we are right. You are confirming the information. This time you do it. Make the sentences into a question. It's a nice day. What comes next to make it into a question? It's a nice day, isn't it? Jane will be here soon. Let's make that into a question. Jane will be here soon, won't she? Alex plays the piano. Alex plays the piano, doesn't he? The weather was better last year. The weather was better last year, wasn't it? So what do you think? You think she likes me? Nah. Yeah? Sounds good. Yeah, I'm happy. We'll see. But we're only dancing, aren't we? Well done. You can now practice making tag questions like those, can't you? You are going to the office party this weekend, aren't you? I hope you enjoyed the lesson. See you next time. Welcome to EF Pod English. Brought to you by EF Education First and English Town. Learn anytime, anywhere. Pod English Elementary 26. Travel around the world. In this lesson, we're going to talk about two different ways of talking about the future. When to use be going to and when to use will for the future. Let's watch a short movie now. Stanley has a big offer for his friend Becky. Hello Becky, this is Stanley. Hi Stanley, what's up? Becky, I've just made a big decision. I'm going to travel around the world and I'd like you to come with me. The entire world? Yes, all of it. I'm going to begin in Los Angeles and go west. I'm not going to stop until I come to Los Angeles again. That sounds like an adventure. It will be an adventure. Do you want to come? Of course I do. How are we going to travel? I'm not sure yet, but I expect we'll travel in many ways. Sometimes we'll take a plane or a train. Other times we'll ride the bus or go by taxi. Perhaps we'll rent a car or even a motorcycle. Can you remember what Stanley is going to do? Let's see that bit of the movie again. Becky, I've just made a big decision. I'm going to travel around the world and I'd like you to come with me. Stanley is going to travel around the world. We use be going to for the future when we have a definite plan. So where is Stanley going to begin his trip? That's right, Stanley is going to begin his trip in Los Angeles. We've talked about when we use be going to. So when do we use will 
when we are talking about the future. I should tell Becky about the trip. I'll call her now. I'll is the same as I will. We use will for the future when we decide at the same time as we are talking. Fill in the gap with be going to or will. What about this one? Stanley and Becky are going to travel around the world. Try this one. Sometimes we will take a plane or a train. Well done! Today we've been talking about different ways of talking about the future. We use be going to for plans. Stanley is going to travel around the world. We use will for decisions at the time of speaking. I should tell Becky about the trip. I'll call her now. Well, that's all we've got time for today. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Bye! Welcome to EF Pod English. Brought to you by EF Education First and English Town. Learn anytime, anywhere. Pod English Elementary 27 Clothes. What am I going to wear for this party tonight? In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to use May might and maybe. But first, we will watch a short movie that takes place in a clothing store. Marilyn is looking for clothes for a special party. Her friend Diane is helping her. What do you think of this? I don't know. It's a little old-fashioned. What kind of party is this again? It's a party for the opening of this new club downtown, so I want something special. Some famous people might be there. Like who? My friend said Tom Cruise and Jennifer Lopez might be there. Are you serious? Yes, they're good friends with the owner. Wow, it sounds like it'll be a fun party. When is it? Saturday night. It starts at 8. Are you going with John? Maybe. He might not have enough time. He has to go to Brazil next week. If he can't come, do you want to go with me? Of course, maybe I'll meet Tom Cruise. Super. What do you think about this one? Is it formal enough? Yeah, it's nice, but it looks a little expensive. Yeah, it is $400. Maybe we should keep looking. I know this one store that has really stylish clothes and the prices are very reasonable. We're going to look at how to use may and might. Let's look at an example from the movie. Some famous people might be there. Some famous people might be there. We can also say, some famous people may be there. We use may or might when we talk about something which is possible. We don't really know if it will happen. Let's see some more examples. I may go to the dentist today. My brother might come to my house later. They might visit France next year. Did you notice that the verb after may or might is the infinitive? You don't change anything. We can also use maybe as an answer to a question when you don't know the answer for sure. Are you going to the party tonight? Maybe. Now it's your turn. Answer the question using might or may. What are you going to wear tonight? I may wear my red dress. Or you could say, I might wear my red dress. Let's do another one. Where is she going on vacation? She might go to Egypt, or she may go to Egypt. 
And can you think of an answer to this question? Do you want to go out tonight? We can say maybe when we are not sure. So today you've had a look at using may, might, and maybe in conversation. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. See you again soon. I have nothing to wear. Welcome to EF Pod English, brought to you by EF Education First and English Town. Learn anytime, anywhere. Pod English Elementary Twenty Eight, Office Phone. Good morning, Stark and Starky Corporation. How may I direct your call? Oh, it's the English lesson. Is it that time already? My my, it sure is. I'm going to hand you over to the teacher now for your English lesson. Enjoy your class. In this lesson, we're going to learn some useful phrases to say on the telephone, like when we answer the phone. Good morning. Can I help you? Hello. Could I speak to John Baker, please? We'll also learn this very useful thing to say. Can I take a message? We'll learn all these things, and then we'll have a quiz at the end. But now it's time to watch the movie. Carl is trying to call Marty. Good morning, Bolster Motors. How can I help you? Hi, can I speak with Marty Bickman, please? Sure. One moment, please. Oh, I'm sorry. But Mr. Bickman isn't in his office at the moment. Can I take a message?、Uh, well, I really need to speak with him. Do you know when he will be back? He should be back in about two hours or so. Would you like his mobile number? I think I have it. It's five 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 six seven nine zero five five, right? Yes, that's right. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you for calling. Goodbye. Bye. Hello, this is Marty. Hi, Marty. It's Carl. Hey, Carl. How are you? Fine. Listen, I just tried、uh, calling your office, and you weren't there. I'm afraid I can't make it to lunch today. Really? What's the problem? One of my clients has an emergency, and I have to go to check it out. Okay. Well, how about later today then? Say five o'clock. I really don't think I can make it today. No problem. I understand. I'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye. Carl wants to speak to Marty. What does he say? Hi. Can I speak with Marty Bickman, please? Carl says, "Hi." Could I speak with Marty Bickman, please? It's also correct to say, "Can I speak with Marty Bickman, please?" But "could" is more formal than "can." It's better to say "could" if you don't know the other person on the telephone. Marty isn't in the office. Let's see what his secretary says. Oh, I'm sorry, but Mr. Bickman isn't in his office at the moment. Can I take a message? Marty is not there, so his secretary says, "Can I take a message?" You can also say, "I'm sorry, Marty isn't here. Can I help you?" Can I take a message? In the end, Carl rings Marty on his cell phone. Why is Carl ringing Marty? Can you remember? I'm afraid I can't make it to lunch today. I'm afraid I can't make it. We say this when we can't go to an appointment. I'm afraid means the same as I'm sorry. Let's do a few more examples. I'm very busy today. I'm afraid I can't make it for lunch. I'm sorry, I can't make it to the meeting. We're now going to have a quiz. Can you remember all those useful things we learnt to say on the telephone? 
I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson's not here right now. Can I take a message? Oh, can I let you hold? Do you mind? Thank you. Starkey and Starkey Corporation. Marty is not in his office. What does Marty's secretary say to Carl? Marty is not here. Can I take a message? She could also say, Can I help you? Carl is ringing Marty to tell him he can't meet him. What does he say? I'm afraid I can't make it. Or, I'm sorry, I can't make it. You are on the telephone. You want to speak to Jack Smith. Someone else answers the telephone. What do you say? Hello, could I speak to Jack Smith, please? No problem. Why don't I just uh, take your number down right now and I'll give you a call back? Well done. I hope you feel more confident on the telephone now. We've talked about useful phrases such as... Could I speak with Marty Bickman, please? Marty is not here, but can I take a message? Well, that's all we've got time for today. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Join us again soon. Bye. Voice message, voice message. Welcome to EF Pod English. Brought to you by EF Education First and English Town. Learn anytime, anywhere. Pod English Elementary 29 Job Candidates. So, Ellie, tell me, what did you think of this candidate? I thought she was great. I really did. I think she's so. She's perfect, Jacob. She's ev yeah. Look at all the candidates we've seen so far. They were so dull. Sure, all of that's nice, yeah, all of but that's she doesn't nice. have the skills that we're looking for. But which skills specifically? But Ellie, come on. If you match the position with her skills, what yeah. does she have? She's got great communication skills. No, she She's, does not. She does. In this lesson, we're going to find some different ways of describing people. We're going to talk about their personalities and their skills. My friend Anna is so funny. Peter is very hard working. Before we watch the movie, look at this word. Candidate. This is a person you interview for a job. Let's watch the movie. Kirsten and Nick work together. Which candidate do Kirsten and Nick like most? What did you think of the first candidate? Well, I thought his resume was good, but I don't really think he has all the skills that we're looking for. Yes, he seemed very charming, don't you think? Mm, exactly. I think he has more charm than real leadership skills. I see. Well, what about the second candidate? Oh, better, I thought. Um, she answered the questions we gave her creatively and confidently. She did, didn't she? She's very serious and seems to be a hard-working person. Yes, but that might mean that she doesn't have the communication skills that we're looking for. Mm, but we don't know for sure, so we shouldn't consider that too much. Yes, I think you're right. Um, what about the third candidate? I can't separate him from the second one. Yes, he was good, and I think you're right. It's a hard choice. Perhaps we should wait for the results of the handwriting test before we decide. Yes, that's a good idea. We'll wait. Kirsten and Nick like the second and third candidates most. What does Nick think about the first candidate? I thought his resume was good, but I don't really think he has all the skills that we're looking for. I don't really think he has all the skills we are looking for. When we are talking about jobs, we often use this word to describe what people can do well. Skills. Let's look at some more examples. Communication skills. To have communication skills, you can speak and write well. The second candidate doesn't have good communication skills. Leadership skills. Sally is a good manager. 
She has leadership skills. Let's watch two examples from the movie. What words does Kirsten use to describe the candidates' personalities? They seem very charming, don't you think? Hmm, exactly. She's very serious and seems to be a hard-working person. Charming, serious, hard-working. We use all these words to describe people. Tell me, what did you think of this candidate? I thought she was fantastic. Yeah? Like, yeah, she's passionate, she's enthusiastic, she's charming, uh, she's serious, she comes across as friendly and hard-working. He seems very charming. This means he is very good at talking to people. She's very serious and hard-working. Use the words you learnt in the lesson to fill in the gaps. That's right, the word is skills. James has many skills. He can write well. He also has very good computer skills. Can you remember which adjective goes here? Hard working. Susan works very hard. She is very hard working. Let's do one more. Rupert doesn't laugh much. He's very... Can you think of an adjective to describe Rupert? That's right. Rupert doesn't laugh much. He's very serious. Well done. In today's lesson, we've discussed how to describe people's personalities. He seems very charming. She's very serious and hard-working. We've also talked about people's skills, such as communication skills, leadership skills. Well, that's all we've got time for today. We don't have the time to train someone up. We need the right skills base today. Yeah. So maybe we just need to say thanks, but no thanks. It's a tough call. It's a very nice person would fit yeah. in the environment, but I agree that's the right decision. Okay, I'll call it tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Welcome to EF Pod English. Brought to you by EF Education First and English Town. Learn anytime, anywhere. Pod English Elementary 30. Quit smoking. I have to quit smoking, but this job is driving me crazy. And I've tried everything. I'm everything. I have to quit smoking. In this lesson, we're going to learn to talk about obligations. What you should do and what you have to do. There are big differences between the two. Oh. God. Before we watch the movie, let's look at these words. To break a habit. This means to stop doing something. Hooked. This means you can't stop. Another word for this is addicted. She's hooked on smoking. She can't give up. This job is driving me crazy. Just crazy. I don't want to fix any more light fixtures. Let's fix the light fixtures. Zach, you need to fix the light fixtures as soon as possible. Are you ready to watch the movie? Aren't you going for a smoke break? Nope. I quit last week. Really? Good for you. I thought you were hooked. Well, I was. I smoked a lot for about five years, but I thought I should break the habit. I know exactly what you mean. My doctor said that I had to quit three years ago. So that's why you never smoke. Yeah, I had to quit. And now I'm glad that I did. It's tough, though. Don't you ever want to smoke when you feel stressed? I used to. But then I found some good habits to reduce stress instead. Oh, really? Like what? I go for a walk a few times a week, and I try and play tennis at least once or twice a month. And when you do that, you don't want to smoke? You must have a lot of willpower. Well, I think it just takes time. Replacing bad habits with good habits. Sounds good to me. I hope to do the same thing.
Does Derek smoke? Does Kai smoke? That's right, Derek doesn't smoke. Kai doesn't smoke. Let's listen to Derek first. My doctor said that I had to quit three years ago. My doctor told me I had to quit. I had to is the past of I have to. We use have to or had to when something is necessary. Let's look at some more examples to help you understand. I have to wear glasses. Let's now look at the past tense. When I was a child, I had to wear glasses. Had to is the past of have to. Let's look at what Kai said about smoking. I smoked a lot for about five years, but I thought I should break the habit. I thought I should break the habit. Should. We use should when we think something is a good idea. Let's look at some more examples. You really quit smoking, it's not good for your health. Well, you know, I gotta bring home money and I gotta keep on working so that I can feed you. My baby, I'm worried about your health. Oh yeah, well, you know what, I'm worried about my job. Oh, but, but, but baby, I don't want you to die and stuff like that. Well, we're gonna die in the street anyway. I mean, it's like, you know, back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Use either have to or had to or should to fill in the gaps. Remember have to is for now and had to is the past. We have to buy a parking ticket here. Let's do some more. Smoking is really bad for you. You should quit. Three years ago, Derek's doctor told him he had to give up smoking. Okay. That's it. Right, right when I want to smoke, I can't smoke. Well done. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. We've learned to talk about obligations using have to and had to and should. Well, I have to go now, but see you again soon. Bye. Welcome to EF Pod English, brought to you by EF Education First and English Town. Learn anytime, anywhere. Pod English Elementary 31 Cooking. Today's lesson might make you feel a bit hungry. I'm going to cook some great Italian pasta. So while I'm preparing the sauce, your English teacher will take you through today's lesson. Today, we're going to learn words about cooking. We're also going to talk about quantities, such as much and many. Before we watch a short movie, I'll teach you some vocabulary which may be new to you. To season. This means to add salt and pepper or other spices to season. Casserole. This is a meal made out of meat and vegetables. Cooks for a long, long time. Are you ready to watch the movie? We're going to watch two friends, Stan and Charlotte, making a meal. Can you pass the salt and pepper? Sure. Are you going to season the meat? Yes. It needs some herbs too. Is there any rosemary on that shelf? No, but there's some sage. Will that do? Yes, we'll need lots of that. Now, as soon as you've fried the onions, we'll add the meat. Are they ready? Yep, they're perfect. When should I add the garlic? I usually add it after all the other ingredients. How much meat shall I put in? Let's put in half now, and then the rest after it starts to turn brown. When it's all in, We'll add the garlic and wine. Okay. I need a lot of oil. 
How much is left? Oh, there's plenty. How many carrots do you think we'll need? As many as you can find. We need lots of vegetables. Mm. Do you think the casserole will be ready before everyone arrives? Well, it needs three hours to cook, so we've got lots of time. Charlotte and Stan are cooking. They season the meat. What else do they need to add? It needs some herbs too. It needs some herbs. Some. Charlotte could also say, needs some salt. Needs some water. Here's another way of talking about quantities. We'll need lots of that. Lots. Which is more? Some or lots of? Lots of is more than some. Mm, smells great. Holy crap. Let's watch two clips from the movie. Why do we sometimes use many and sometimes use much? How much meat shall I put in? How many carrots do you think we'll need? Much. Many. How much meat? How many carrots? We use much with meat. We use many with carrots. Let's talk about why. We use much with uncountable nouns. This means we can't count them. For example, money, bread, water, milk. We use many with nouns we can count. Carrots, eggs, apples. Here are some examples. Eggs. Eggs are countable. How many eggs shall I put in? Milk. Milk is uncountable. You can't say milks. How much milk do you want? Money. Money is uncountable. I don't have much money at the moment. You can't say money's here. Now it's your turn. Mmm. Very good. Oh, one second. The pasta is ready. Choose many or much to fill in the gap. Many tourists in Rome. Let's do another. That's right, Jane has many friends. We've got time for one more. How much milk do you take in your coffee? Well done! Today we've learned words about cooking. We've also talked about quantities such as lots, some, much. We use much with uncountable nouns such as money and milk. Many. We use many with countable nouns such as eggs and apples. Great! Join us again soon for another lesson. Buon appetito! Welcome to EF Pod English. Brought to you by EF Education First and English Town. Learn anytime, anywhere. Pod English Elementary 32 Planning a Trip. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to make comparisons in English using superlatives. Expressions like the biggest or the best. Today's movie is about vacations. So I went there. Eddie wants to go on vacation. And I asked him, that's what I want. Christina is helping him choose where to go. I want the most beautiful beaches. I want the best food ever. I want most comfortable hotel, right? 
just three things. Before we watch the movie, we'll look at some new words. Package tour. Resort. These are two different kinds of vacations. Package tours are cheap vacations. When you buy a package tour, it often includes your flight and your hotel. A resort is a place where you go for your vacation. A tight budget. This means you don't have much money to spend. Does Eddie want a cheap or expensive vacation? Let's watch the movie. Hi, Christina. What took you so long? I got you some travel brochures. Want to look? Brilliant, thanks. Did you get some for Greece? I got you a whole range. Everything from the cheapest package tour to the most expensive resort. Wow, you've got loads of them. Where's this place with the gorgeous beach? That's in the Canary Islands. It's supposed to be one of the cleanest and most beautiful beaches. But it's super expensive. I want a pretty tight budget. Where would you go? Well, I like diving. So I'd go to the place with the best water and sea life. You don't dive, do you? Nah, I prefer lazing by the beach with a good book. And I like a place with a good nightlife. Well, Ibiza is perfect for you then. It's easily the busiest place for nightlife. But the beaches are some of the most crowded in Europe. Don't you mind? Not really. My friend Charlie's been all over Europe. And he told me that he had the most fun in Ibiza. Plus the other tourists were some of the friendliest he'd met. So, you want to go to Ibiza then? It sounds like the most exciting place for a holiday. But let's check out some more brochures before I decide. Eddie wants a cheap holiday. He's on a tight budget. Luckily, Christina has lots of different kinds of travel brochures. I got you a whole range. Everything from the cheapest package tour to the most expensive resort. The cheapest package tour. We add est onto the adjective to make the superlative, cheapest. The superlative is used when you compare more than two things. But if the adjective is long, like expensive, we use most before the adjective. Most expensive. Let's look at another example from the movie. Well, Ibiza is perfect for you then. It's easily the busiest place for nightlife. But the beaches are some of the most crowded in Europe. It's the busiest place for nightlife. But the beaches are some of the most crowded in Europe. Most crowded. This is a longer adjective, so we use most before it. Yeah, the beach was okay. Nice. Clean. But it was the most crowded beach ever. When the adjective ends in a Y, we add I-E-S-T. Busy, busiest. Happy, happiest. Friendly, friendliest. So, that's why I ended up buying the most expensive backpack and accessories for, for hiking. The problem is that I hurt myself. That's me. Now it's your turn. Use the adjective to make the superlative. Eddie is on a tight budget. He chose the cheapest vacation. Fill in both these gaps with the adjectives. Ibiza is the busiest place for nightlife, but the beaches are the most crowded in Europe. Well done. You should be able to make comparisons using superlatives now. It's one of the most common expressions in English. Ibiza is the busiest place for nightlife. The beaches are the most crowded in Europe. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Join us again soon. Bye. It was the worst vacation ever. <laughs>